Now, today is a very auspicious day. It's a special day. It is Emancipation Day. And, you know, Emancipation Day have a lot to do with emancipating ourselves from the vibrations that have held us back, that has held us down. Indeed, being free have a lot to do with the will to do what we need to do, what we are sent to do. But being emancipated have a lot to do with putting away the things at will that has held us down. You know, most people celebrate Emancipation Day without giving the word emancipation any real thought. Indeed, for some people it bears no real significance in their minds. There's no resolve, no true deep contemplation. For some, it's just a holiday, a day to go to the beach, etc. But if we attach the true significance to the word emancipation, we would remember our ancestors, remember what they've been through, remember their pain. Remember how they lost their identity at the hands of extremely cruel merchants who stole them from their people and from their father's land and packed them like sardines on slave ships and sold them to their European brothers for a shilling or maybe a pence here in this Western Hemisphere. Then... They brutally snatch our identity from us, snatch our tribal heritage from us. For those of us who belong to the Yoruba tribe, or the Zulu tribe, or the Fulani tribe, or the Mandingo tribe, belonged to those tribes no more. For after being sold, we were dragged away in chains and branded like cattle. The names of the cruel owners on our backs. So now we suddenly became the property of European men and forced to carry his name for the rest of our sad, miserable lives. The Africans, that is the Alcabalan people, that were brought by Mr. Stewart, were all identified as the property of the House of Stewart. And their children were sold to Mr. Brown, and were all branded the word Brown in their backs. And their children were sold to Mr. Griffith, and branded as Griffith, and lived until they died on Griffith House, on Griffith property or Griffith Plantation. You know, as a child, I studied history at school. And I wondered where God was at that time. And more significantly, what could be done to remedy this curse? For it is the only real generation curse I have ever known. It is a curse because no one else has it. Only Africans outside of Africa. I found it very shameful because no other race of human beings has been treated this way. And no other race of human beings would have accepted this shameful curse and give this name to his oppressor, of his oppressor, of 400 years to his son and his daughter. So gladly. I remember at the age of 12, my mother took me to see a psychologist. She was sure something was wrong with me, for I refused to speak to anyone, to smile with anyone. My school teacher, Miss Paris, was so great a teacher that 
When she spoke about slavery, all the children lifted up their voices and they cried. We were absolutely traumatized. Some of us wondered what we could do to distance ourselves from the plantation. She pointed out to us, and rightfully so, that we were like birds who spent so much time in a cage that, that now as the cage door is open, we are afraid to, to fly away and enjoy the freedom of the trees, enjoy the majesty of the mountains, enjoy the beauty of the hills. We were too afraid to suck the sweet nectar from the beautiful flowers that grew around, along the sides of the rivers. So captivated with our beloved captivity that we would sit in a cage for the rest of our lives and eat dry bird seed from the hands of the unscrupulous descendants of the slave masters. When we could have been eating fresh apples and mangoes from the trees. Well, the psychologist examined me properly. She asked me many questions concerning my refusal to eat, my refusal to speak to anyone. Then she turned to my mother and she said, Ma'am, there's nothing wrong with your son. As far as I can see, he's far ahead of his years. I wish every child would think the way he does. He has questions that only God himself could answer, not even Jesus. So leave him alone. He'll come around in time. He's not a boy, but a great leader who takes into account everything that was allowed to happen to his people. Perhaps the rest of us can learn much from him. By this time I had spoken to my father. I had asked him questions that he seemed almost too ashamed to answer. I let him know at that time to his face that his two other sons would carry on his last name, but not me. For not even the almighty God who made the heavens and the earth could make me give my children the slave owner's name. And he smiled. Wait till you grow up, he said. You'll forget all of that by then. I remember years later I visited my father and handed him the deed poll paper showing that my last name is no longer Brown. I had created a new name for myself to start my own family heritage, my own bloodline. Then he realized it was more than, I was more than determined more than serious. That night as I went to sleep, I found myself on a high mountain in Africa in a dream. And a very tall, great Mandingo-looking warrior came to see me. He hugged me so close and so tight, I was almost breathless. My son, he said, look over my shoulder. Tell me what you see. And sure enough, there were thousands and thousands of African people, some wearing beautiful Kente African print clothing, all looking and waving at me with smiles of love on their faces. You don't know me, son, he said, but you're one of my boldest warriors. We are all here to thank you. You freed us all today. You know, I woke up in tears that night. Going back to sleep was impossible. I was overjoyed. I had done the right thing, and I knew it. May more and more of us do the right thing. You're listening to Wisdom Unveiling on Emancipation Day. <laughs> 